You can use your red light therapy mask at any time of day, whether the blinds are open or not. The light is directly on your face, so you don't have to worry about the light that's around you. You can use it any time of day. Those are the two devices I use religiously, microcurrent and LED, and it's just easier to put my microcurrent in the morning also because I get that immediate benefit from the microcurrent. Where the red light, there isn't an immediate benefit that you're getting. It's more long-term. So to me, I'm fine using it at night when I'm just going to be going to bed. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hashtags Confusius the Podcast. On today's podcast episode, we are covering some of the questions and answers from the last few Instagram story Q&As I've done. If you're new around here, every Sunday on my Instagram stories, I put up a box to get your questions about everything from skincare, hair care, skin science, overall health and wellness motherhood, life, style, anything at all that you want to ask questions on. And I print them out and go through as many as I can on this podcast to get your questions answered. One other little thing that I've been implementing into the intros of these episodes is covering a couple of my favorite products that I've discovered in the last few months. And I find that this is really helpful just to keep you guys up to date on the products that I'm currently using in my routine. And two of them specifically, I think are really helpful for this like kind of fall transition time that we're in for our skin. One of them being the Hyaluronic Acid Serum from PCA. So a separate Hyaluronic Acid Serum is not necessary for everyone. But if you're somebody who feels like your skin is dry and dehydrated and no matter how much moisturizer you put on, you feel like you just can't get on top of the problem, then moisturization is probably not your problem and instead what you're lacking is actually hydration. And these are two completely different things and it's often a mistake in skincare when people think that they only need one or the other. I see this all the time. So I really like this serum for anybody who is, like I said, in that boat where they feel like they just can't get like thirst of their skin quenched. And the reason I like this one specifically is because it has multiple types of hyaluronic acid, but it also has ceramides. So not only are you getting the hydration, but you're also getting the barrier support of ceramides, which as you guys know, is like one of my favorite all-star ingredients, especially for dry skin types. And the next product that I'm really loving is the Dr. Belmure. It's their Sika cream. It is actually an Amazon find. So I found it on Amazon. It's a K-Beauty product that people were raving about. So I bought it to try for myself and I really like it. It has Centella Asiatica, so it's going to be really nice for those who have dry, sensitive skin. But the reason I specifically like it for this transition time is it's not super heavy. Like it's not a super heavy cream that's going to sit on top of the skin. So for some people, it may not be enough, but for people who are like normal to dry during this transition time, before it gets super cold and dry outside, this is a really nice in-between moisturizer, especially if you like to layer, of course, course in the morning you're going to layer your sunscreen on top which often has moisturizing properties in it too so it's really nice if you feel like a heavy cream made for dry skin is often too much on your skin this can be a really nice medium and again it has that Sika, the Centella Asiatica which is a fantastic ingredient for anybody with sensitive skin. All right, let's get into some of your questions from the last few weeks. I'm just going to go down the line and answer as many as I can get to. So let's go with number one, anything I can do at home to help melasma at home. So bad after my second baby. So melasma is a chronic condition. There is no cure. Once you have it, you will have it most likely until menopause. Menopause, it starts to kind of um, clear up because we don't have as many hormonal influences or we don't have the same in hormonal influences at that time. So whether you got it in pregnancy, whether you got it from birth control, really it doesn't matter what initially brought it on. What matters is how you manage it. Now, can you do some things at home? Absolutely. This is especially helpful if you're somebody who's really naive to products that are meant to treat hyperpigmentation. I find that my patients who come in who have melasma, who are just brand new to a skincare regimen or brand new to hyperpigmentation regimen do really well because those skin cells haven't yet been exposed to all of these ingredients out there. It can become more and more difficult if you're someone like me who already uses everything to tackle hyperpigmentation. Things don't work as well, right? Well, that I shouldn't say they don't work as well. It's not it's not going to get me completely clear because my skin is is used to these ingredients. You do want to take a break from these ingredients. So whenever I use something that is targeting hyperpigmentation, there's actually a certain class of ingredients I look for. I'll use them for three months on, one month off, and I'll do this rotation to kind of give my um, skin cells some time to adapt, but then also give them a break from these ingredients so that when I go back to them, they work better. So in office, 
Of course, our heavy hitter is going to be hydroquinone. At home, there are other options that you can do. Absolutely. One thing that is super important is making sure that you're wearing a tinted sunscreen every single day. I know I sound like a broken record when it comes to tinted sunscreens, but truly your melasma or hyperpigmentation is not going to improve if you're not using one regularly. Second, of course, a retinoid in your routine is important because it helps to increase that cellular turnover, bring that pigment to the surface, and help remove it from the surface layer of the skin. And then the third class of ingredients that you want to make sure that you have is ingredients that are meant to specifically target hyperpigmentation. So there's no one product. You really have to use them in conjunction with each other. But there are a lot of really great lightening ingredients on the market. Really great formulas. I will link a few down below. But some of my favorites are the La Roche-Posay Melaclear. I love their serum. Elastin Illuminate has some great technology. What else? There's so many good ones. The Skin Medica Even and Correct Serum is a great at-home option for hyperpigmentation. You just want to pick one and stick with it. I recommend using most of these twice a day if you can. Make sure you're using your sunscreen in the morning and then make sure you're also using your retinoid at night. Next question, should you avoid retinoids while trying to conceive? So I recommend that you stop your retinoid when you become pregnant, especially if it's an over-the-counter strength. There really isn't a super high risk of there being any issues, right? The, the risk when it comes to topical retinoids is really a theoretical risk of birth defects that we extrapolate from the risk that we know is associated with oral forms of vitamin A like isotretinoin. So topical forms, especially in the strengths that you're going to be getting out at Sephora, at Derm Store, places like that are not going to pose a huge risk. So in my practice, I tell my patients, just stop your retinoid when you find out you're pregnant. If you're someone who is wants to be on the more cautious side, you can absolutely stop while trying to conceive. With that being said, that can sometimes be a long process. So if you're someone who is trying to conceive month after month, you don't necessarily have to stop your retinoid. You can still get the benefits of it and just stop when you find out that you're pregnant. Similarly, I tell people if you were using your retinoid and you didn't find out until, you know, weeks or months in that you were pregnant, don't panic. It's truly, it's going to be okay, I promise. It's just something that we want to stop out of caution once we know that we're expecting. Next one, what's a good question for cystic acne on the face and body? So cystic acne is tough. It is a, a more moderate to severe form of acne and sometimes the cleanser isn't enough to do it. Actually, most times your cleanser isn't enough to treat cystic acne. However, if you are looking for a cleanser to implement into your already, your routine that you already have for cystic acne, my favorite for this type of breakouts is benzoyl peroxide. So I would go with like the the Panoxyl Creamy Wash. It's really nice. It has the benzoyl peroxide, but it's also in a gentle creamy formulation that can be used on the face and the body. This is one of my favorite ways to keep breakouts at bay. Um, I used it during pregnancy to keep my pregnancy breakouts at bay. Just keep it in my shower, wash my back, wash my face with it. I leave it on for about 60 seconds and then I rinse it off and go on with the rest of my routine. Obviously, because it does have benzoyl peroxide, you want to be super, super careful that you rinse all of it off because it will bleach your towels. It will bleach your sheets. It's just a very unfortunate fact of benzoyl peroxide. Is it better to be in a dark room when you're using your red light therapy or does the daylight not matter? The daylight doesn't matter. You can use your red light therapy mask at any time of day, whether the blinds are open or not. The light is directly on your face, so you don't have to worry about the light that's around you. You can use it any time of day. I just use mine at night just because it's easier to implement into my nighttime routine because I often use my microcurrent in the morning. I actually did a whole episode on the podcast about like my full morning routine and my full nighttime routine. Those are the two devices I use religiously, microcurrent and LED, and it's just easier to put my microcurrent in the morning also because I get that kind of immediate benefit from the microcurrent where the red light there isn't an immediate benefit that you're getting it's more long term so to me I'm fine using it at night when I'm just going to be going to bed oh this is a great question it has something to do with hydration which we just talked about which is funny does a hydration serum substitute a moisturizer absolutely not everybody needs a moisturizer regardless of your skin types and some of us will also benefit from a hydration serum not everybody so moisturization 